So for free cash flow to the firm, um, I like to start with a net income. You can start with net income or CFO or EBIT or even EBITDA. And that is what I'll be doing with you at level two, my friends. But for now, let's learn the formula starting with an I. So if I start with an I, so that's my net income. The first thing that I'm going to do is add back my non-cash charges. So this is going to be very, very reminiscent of our work in the early stages of the cash flow statement where we talked about CFO. So remember here, what are my three non-cash charges? Remember the rule of three that Martin always talks about. So my non-cash charges are depreciation and amortization, gains and losses, and changes in deferred taxes. So these are my three non-cash charges. Then I'm going to subtract working capital investment. And again, here, I want you to think about the rule of three. What are my three most typical working capital investments? So I've got change in accounts receivables, change in inventory, and change in payables. So those typically would represent my working capital investment. And already here, you can notice that these three items represent what's known as the indirect methodology to obtaining our cash flow from operating activities. But we notice here that we're looking at free cash flow to the firm, not the equity. And because we started with net income, we have already subtracted interest, right? Interest being subtracted, but interest is a cash flow to the debt holder. And because the debt holder is part of the firm, a cash flow is a cash flow to the firm. So we must add back the interest. And because interest is tax deductible, we will be adding that interest on an after tax basis. Now, back to my household analogy. Remember, you had to uh, make some non discretionary uh, spend, like, you know, your mortgage payment, your grocery bills. Let's say you have to buy some new clothing and some new shoes. That's your capex. Don't forget your capex. So I also have to subtract the fixed capital investment 